Hi, um, welcome back. I um, just had a couple uh, things I wanted to say about the um, the Old Testament and the New Testament uh, from a prophetic point of view. Um, I want to look at uh, Psalm 22, which um, has uh, prophecy in it, and it's in the Old Testament. Um, and um, if you read it, it's uh, it would probably take you two or three minutes to read it. Um, and um, it, it talks about somebody who um, is being crucified, um, and that that is um, remarkable because the crucifixion really was not ever used back in the Hebrew uh, times. Um, it wasn't even invented until the Romans came along. Um, so, uh, my point here is that I wanted to uh, show, um, without a doubt, something that you can really uh, digest if you want to focus on one thing. And when I study something, I like to, if it's, you know, a huge subject, I, I like to focus on one fact that will help me um, see that something's real. Um, and if I can remember one thing, it, it, it's a, it, it helps me know, um, it gives me a strong stronghold in the subject. And then I can uh, branch off from there. So what would be better than to know that Psalm 22 in the Old Testament represents um, Jesus Christ's crucifixion. So what I'd like to do is read some of it. And um, I would also say that uh, as a disclaimer, if you will, um, the Old Testament, we know the Old Testament um, was in existence before Christ because of uh, Alexander the Great um, translating the Old Testament into Greek. Uh, he translated everything into Greek when he conquered um, land, um, territories and countries and land. So he did the exact same thing for the Old Testament. And um, as a result of that we have um, something called the Septuagint. And, and uh, that's traced back 300 years before Christ. And um, so we, we can, uh, it's a known fact, um, and although nobody really talks about it, and it, it just gives proof the fact that uh, the Word of God is suppressed, but this is a known uh, fact, objectively proven in history, that the Old Testament um, was around 300 years before Christ, but yet there's hundred, uh, probably 50 to 100 um, prophecies regarding Christ, and we're looking at just one, uh, well, actually there's probably 10 in this one chapter, um, 11 I think in this one chapter, chapter 22 of uh, Psalms. So let's uh, get into it real, um, and, and see what it says. Uh, Psalm 22 starts out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? So far from the words of my groaning, oh my God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer by night, and I and am not silent. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the praise of Israel, and you are Father's trust. Our fathers put their trust. They trusted, and you delivered them. They cried out to you, and were saved. And you, they trusted, and were not disappointed. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by men and despised by the people. All who see me mark me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. Now this is um, the first um, um, prophecy with, with reference to the uh, crucifixion. Actually, it might be the second one. Or the first one might be the first, um, very first um, verse. But in Psalm 22, but it's uh, it's um it's confirmed in Luke uh, 23:11, and I'm gonna try to um, read some of that real fast. Um, Luke is in uh, the New Testament; it's one of the four Gospels, and um, 
is probably the best written gospel. Each gospel has a special attribute um, that, that distinguishes it um, from 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 the other. Um, Luke chapter 23, verse 11 says, Then Herod and his soldiers ridiculed and mocked him, dressing him in an elegant robe. They sent him back to Pilate. So that that just um, can fulfills what what happens in Psalm 7, where all who see me mock me, they hurl themselves, shaking their heads. Verse 7. So if we go down to um, verse eight, eight, but, 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 verse eight says, uh, verse nine says, "Yet you brought me out of the womb; you made me trust in you, even at my mo mother's breast. From birth I was cast upon you; from my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me; strong bulls of Bashan encircle me." Roaring lions tear their prey and open their mouths wide against me. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is turned to wax. It has melted away within me. Now here's something kind of going into the crucifixion part again. Um, where, where he says in verse 15, My strength is dried up like a potsherd in my mouth and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. And in verse 16, dogs have surrounded me, a band of evil men has circled me, they have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them and cast lots lots from my clothing. So, and uh, that's verse 16, 17, and 18 in um, Psalm 22 and it's um, confirmation there is in Luke 23 verse uh, 33 and 24 36 to 39 Luke 23 33 is says um, when they came to the place called the skull they crucified him along with the criminals one on his right and the other on his left Jesus said father forgive them for they do not know what they are doing and they divided up his clothes by casting lots so that confirms verse 18 where in Psalms it says they divided my garments among them and cast um, lots for my clothing obviously verse 16 uh, they pierced my hands and my feet that's that's what how that speaks directly of a, a crucifixion. Um, Luke twenty four thirty six says, uh, where are we? Thirty twenty four. I'm sorry, twenty four thirty six. While I was still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, "Peace be with you." Sorry about that. <laughs> um, so, where was I? Alright, so anyway, 26, 36 says, My peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they were a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do doubts rise in your mind? Look at me, my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still not believe it because of his joy and amazement, he asked him, Do you have anything to eat here? A piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Hold on a second. And, and so that shows um, specifically that Jesus was crucified, his hands and feet pierced. Um, so that's basically what I wanted to say about Psalm 22.
Um, you, you can also look at Psalm 22 verse 17 where I can count all my moans and people stare and gloat at me. And I'll finish with this, John 19, um, 31. So we're going to the Gospel of John right now. And what do we have? 1931. I should have bookmarked these. But um, now was now it was the day of preparation, and the next day was to be a special Sabbath, because the Jews did not want bodies left on the crosses on the crosses during the Sabbath. They asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. Soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus and those of the others. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of body, blood, and water. The man who saw it is, has given testimony. His testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth and he testifies so that you may also believe these things happen so that the scripture would be fulfilled not one of his bones will be broken and as another scripture says they will look on the one they have pierced alright so there's the gospels directly quoting Psalm 22 so there's your Bible it's very symmetrical and uh, the Old Testament the New Testament quotes the uh, Old Testament and and the, uh, and Christ is the fulfillment of of the law. He fulfilled the the letter the law to the letter for us. Uh, and and God's word, you know, is is not to be broken. It's the most uh, esteemed uh, thing ever in, in life. Um, you know, you read in John chapter one. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. So that's all, if you read, want to read John chapter 1, but that's an amazing thing. So once the Bible starts to have validity and credibility, and you can see that it really is objectively from God, you'll start to read it with a little different uh, perspective, and, and you will... Um, you know, uphold it'll it'll register higher in your mind, and you will you know bow down to and you pray. You start praying as you're reading, and you 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 will start to develop a spiritual life, which is what you know my old teacher uh, in English uh, at Latin school he 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 said to, I met him uh, I, I bumped well I corresponded with him years after high school and he said uh, he's written two books and he was retiring from Latin and and they basically given him a cold shoulder and he said um, you know the lack of spirituality is the greatest um, problem of our age and you know he was at supposedly the best high school around and that's the conclusion he came to after 30 years and so that's the deal you know you can't live I don't know how people can live without the Word of God you know um, you know Jesus said uh, you shouldn't live by bread alone but every but uh, but the, every word that comes out of the mouth of God and if God is God by definition he can do whatever he wants and he can produce a Bible through through men and that's what he's done so I'd like to thank you for listening tonight and look forward to talking to you next time.